As researcher Randall Carlson revealed Egypt's oldest secret, Carlson allegedly knows the true purpose of the Giza pyramids, and we can reveal, according to Carlson, the monumental structures were not burial chambers. But why then did the Egyptians go to such lengths to place three geometrically perfect structures in the middle of the desert? And what drove people from a certain era of the world age onwards to put enormous effort into the construction of large stone buildings? Randall Carlson's hypothesis about sunken civilizations and the true meaning of many historical buildings shock and shake us awake. For more than a century, science has tried to convince us that the pyramids were the burial chambers of great kings and that Atlantis never existed. But the facts can paint a completely different picture if you, like Carlson, change your perspective. It is incredible what new facts and exciting details alternative scientists have gathered over the last 30 years about many of the world's buildings. These findings are not always comfortable. Many shake our worldview, and we have to ask ourselves what we know about this planet at all. It takes a bit of imagination and an open mind to bypass old theories and find out new things. Archaeologists have long been busy exploring the complexity of the Great Pyramid's construction and spaces that have overlooked one fact. Geo measurements and aerial photographs show that the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau are arranged in exact correspondence of the distance between the main stars in Orion's belt. This gives rise to the theory that the Orion correlation and a breathtaking connection between the three great pyramids of Giza and the mysteries of space. Randall Carlson was not the discoverer of this constellation, but he has the explanations as to why the builders aligned the buildings with Orion of all things. One of the experts in the field of the Orion theory is the researcher Robert Boval. He put forward the theory that this alignment is no coincidence, but a deliberate reflection of the belief in the connection between the Earth, the heavens, and the afterlife. However, Boval still believes in the tomb theory and associates the deliberate recreation of the Orion constellation with Osiris, the Egyptian god of rebirth and the afterlife. Randall Carlson introduces a slightly modified idea of the Orion theory. According to this, the correspondence did not serve purely spiritual purposes. To show a dead pharaoh the way to the afterlife, in Carlson's interpretation, the pyramids of Giza were heavenly maps and portals. Further calculations revealed that triangles of forces arise from the constellation Orion, the sun and the moon at certain constellations, which would literally charge the pyramids. The assumption of such forces is not recognized by renowned science, but there is a whole range of disciplines that deal with energetic phenomena that lie beyond our current physics. If these scientists are to be believed, the pyramids are still traversed by invisible lines of energy that cannot be measured by conventional physics. At certain constellations, this dormant force could become active again and then possibly form a huge teleportation or energy network with other buildings on Earth. Such ideas are fantastic, and the fact that no dead pharaoh or queen was ever found in the rooms, no grave goods, and none of the usual colorful wall paintings. The interior of the pyramids appears downright pragmatic and functional compared to the usual pomp of Egyptian burial culture. Some of the spectacular features of these buildings can still be admired today. On certain days of the year, the sun sets between the pyramids, creating a visual spectacle that may have played a role in ancient Egyptian ceremonies. But here too, Randall Carlson doubts the purely ritual function of the play of light and shadow. He believes that the architecture of the ancient peoples was far more than just beautiful to look at. It had a deep connection to geomythology and a lost knowledge of cosmic forces. Carlson Atlantis sank after an asteroid impact. It sounds like pure magic. Behind the gates of Heracles, there was once a land whose inhabitants were noble and rich. A flourishing paradise on Earth with a mild climate and a legendary capital built in the shape of a ring. The legend of Atlantis was originally passed down through the writings of Plato. In it, the Greek philosopher describes a highly developed society that existed around 9,000 years ago before Plato's own time and was destroyed by a catastrophic flood. Mainstream archaeologists still consider Atlantis to be pure fiction, but many alternative scientists firmly believe in the existence of the mystical island continent and in its demise. 
Plato told of how God punished the Atlanteans after they had become decadent and aggressive. Randall Carlson, on the other hand, believes he has a very practical explanation for the disappearance of Atlantis and its inhabitants. He draws on modern geological and climatological findings that coincide with significant changes in the Earth's history. According to Carlson, the last major change took place with the abrupt end of the last ice age around 11,700 years ago. At that time, the climate changed so rapidly that the seas rose sharply and theoretically led to the sinking of coastal regions or low-lying islands. Atlantis was destroyed, but some of its inhabitants survived and carried their higher knowledge to a world populated by even more primitive people at the time. Some ancient buildings, as well as sudden steps in human development or inexplicable artifacts, are evidence for the existence of highly developed civilizations that populated the globe before the last ice age or even earlier. Carlson's theories are largely based on geocatastrophism to explain some unexplained details from the historical record. Huge climate upheavals, meteorite impacts, and tsunamis are key mechanisms in his theories. The self-proclaimed researcher is not only concerned with the changes to the Earth, Carlson is convinced that we have overlooked an important fact of the Earth's cultural past. Evidence of such events may be found in global flood myths and tales of lost kingdoms. Carlson further argues that many megalithic structures such as Stonehenge or the gigantic stones of Baalbek in Lebanon are clear evidence of advanced engineering and astronomical knowledge. This shows that our ancestors possess knowledge that is no longer accessible to us today. Our culture is a direct result of the development of traction, lever, and gear mechanisms, and later, electricity. We cannot explain many of the ancient buildings with these technological foundations. Scientists have been biting their teeth for decades trying to understand the construction of the pyramids of Egypt using the methods we know today. Not even computer simulations have been able to crack the mystery. Carlson points out that we cannot know what skills and technology our ancestors had on this earth. The very existence of the structures and the many unanswered questions urges us to keep an open mind, especially as the rediscovery of such skills could be a huge step forward for our civilization. In any case, we must face the fact that the builders of Stonehenge, the pyramids of Giza, and other enigmatic sites had access to knowledge and technologies far beyond what we previously assumed for their respective eras. To bridge the gap between disciplines, Carlson brings together mystical lore with scientific data, essentially reviving the holistic science of antiquity. At that time, mathematics, mysticism, music, and the science of astrology were inextricably linked which shows that even 2,000 or 3,000 years ago, people perceived the world very differently from the way we do. The strict separation between the science of numbers and facts and the myths and magic may have been a mistake. Malta, the oldest temples in Europe. They are among the lesser known wonders of the world, the megalithic temples of Hasha Aib and Imnadireda on the Mediterranean island of Malta. These structures, made up of several semicircles, are not only ancient, but also ingeniously constructed. Their age is dated to around 3600 to 3200 BC, which places these temples among the oldest freestanding structures in the world. Hachka Aim and Imnadra are aligned with celestial events and in particular, the solar cycle. We must realize that these buildings existed at the transition from the Neolithic Age to the Copper Age. At that time, people supposedly had nothing more than simple stone tools at their disposal and only slowly began to produce copper. Anyone who has ever experienced copper as a material knows that it is far too soft to produce durable tools. But it is hard to imagine that more than 5,000 years ago, people used stone hammers to build such structures and then place them with astonishing architectural and astronomical precision. During the equinoxes, a play of light is revealed inside the temples, in which inner stone slabs are brightly illuminated. Now we have to ask ourselves whether people went to this effort just to witness a picturesque play of light, or whether the buildings had another purpose that we no longer understand today. Similar to Stonehenge, these two oldest temples in Malta also raise the question of how people were able to drag, erect, and precisely align 
huge megaliths weighing several tons. Malta is rich in stones, but each of these limestone blocks was dragged over a distance of several hundred meters to kilometers and then neatly erected. The Truth of Geomythology Randall Carlson is a passionate ambassador of geomythology, where matter, energy, and myths merge. It almost seems as if the researcher and architect had a subtle understanding of what people really felt and wanted to express thousands of years ago. Carlson's geomythology sees ancient myths and legends not only as captivating stories, but as codes to a more comprehensive understanding of the world than we have today. This knowledge could close the gaps in our modern science. A central aspect of Carlson's research is the study of sacred geometry, an ancient science that holds that certain geometric shapes and relationships have a deeper power. Shapes such as the flower of life, the all-seeing eye, and the sun symbol appear on sacred structures, temples, and pyramids around the world. Carlson's theory goes far beyond the idea that geometry only serves as a kind of sacred language. Symbols express the harmony of the cosmos and guide certain forces. However, according to Carlson, it is necessary to know how these sacred forms are activated and applied. Symbols such as the flower of life are said to contain the entire mathematical knowledge of the universe. Consequently, as a kind of geometric and mathematical compass, they can also convey complex astronomical knowledge. This sometimes sounds difficult for us modern people to grasp, but anyone who delves into the matter soon finds so many exciting connections that sacred geometry seems ever more plausible. Hidden Underworld of the Giza Plateau Pyramids are often thought of as being the tombs of ancient Egypt's pharaohs, but according to archaeologists, they had a far more important purpose than just as burial tombs. In fact, archaeologists have discovered that the pyramids are actually designed for use as refuges for people in times of war or natural disasters. They also serve as a long-term storage facility for food, water, and equipment needed during emergencies. The Sphinx and the pyramids were built with a precise mathematical design, which indicates that they are precise instruments to assist humanity at the time of an event. Modern-day scholars have found evidence of an ancient lost civilization on the Giza Plateau. They discovered that there is a hidden underworld underneath, which is linked to a parallel world. Giza Necropolis The Giza Necropolis is located on the outskirts of Cairo and covers an area of about 6 square kilometers. It comprises pyramids, temples, tombs, and other structures. They built the graveyard in three different phases. Phase 1. It started with Dozier's complex, which included a pyramid and his temple from the 27th century BC. Phase 2. It began with Monocar's pyramid, which was constructed around 2450 BC. In this phase, called the Middle Kingdom, Khufu's pyramid and Khafre's complex were also added to the site. Phase 3. It began with Sneferu's Red Pyramid, which was constructed around 2600 BC. All these buildings are near each other at the same site. The Sphinx and its Legendary Wonders The Sphinx is one of the most recognizable and mysterious monuments in Egypt. It is a creature with a human head, a jackal's body, and a lion's claws. This legendary monument has been at its present site for over 4,500 years. The Sphinx was carved out of natural rock in 2500 BC by Pharaoh Khafre, Sheferin. Originally, it had a lion's body and a bird's head, but only part of that statue remains on the Sphinx rump. The Valley Temple The Valley Temple is located on the eastern side of the Khufu Pyramid. It's known to be one of only three surviving temples on the Giza Plateau. It was built for Khufu's consort, Queen Henusen. It has two courts, with a smaller temple between them. The Valley Temple was initially used as a boat station for Khufu's funeral procession, which would make its way from Memphis to Giza. In ancient times, Egyptians had ceremonies there during the parades. Later, when Christianity came to Egypt, they converted it to a church that can still be seen today. Nearby archaeologists found jars made of clay. They have never been opened, but are believed to contain wine or beer to use in this temple during ceremonies. The Great Pyramid no list of ancient secrets would be complete without mentioning the Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the most awe-inspiring structures on Earth. It was built as a tomb for Pharaoh Khufu. It is believed that it took 10 to 20 years to construct and would have required about 20 million stone blocks made from limestone quarried in Torah. 
There are 192 secret chambers inside, including five colossal ones. The Great Pyramid may be one of the most famous structures on Earth, but many secrets remain hidden from our sight. We've gathered some of the best theories about what might have been left inside and their possible meanings. One theory is that an inscription was left within an air shaft on the pyramid's north side. If true, this could represent the rules we should live by or a way to pass judgment on humanity. Another idea is that they served as a type of map showing the way to heaven. They may have been instructions for how to build other pyramids. Whatever these writings may say, their meaning has been lost to history. The Twelve Palaces, which are regularly disposed On the south side of the Sphinx, the palace is regularly disposed. The palace faces one side, one court is at its center, and it is more significant than all of those surrounding it. Inscriptions on these buildings show that they were built by order of King Ramses II to serve as residences for himself and his queen. They provide us with an insight into some daily life aspects of ancient Egypt. What types of furniture we used, what sorts of food they ate, how they entertained themselves. All this gives us an idea about life in ancient Egypt. The Mortuary Temple it was during this time that work began on a mortuary temple. This temple was on the western side of the Great Pyramid and was built in honor of Khufu's mother, Hetrophyrus. Due to the work's total secrecy, the project took around 18 years to complete, from 2558 to 2548 BC. All workers were buried alive inside the temple walls so that nobody could reveal what they saw. Workers were also killed by having their heads chopped off so that no one would know how deep underground they extracted granite from a quarry near Lake Mauritius to construct the interior corridors and chambers within Khufu's pyramid. The Solar Bark A solar bark, or boat, is an efficient Egyptian coffin. They used it to transport the body of pharaohs to their final resting place. A solar bark has one large rectangular section with a projecting prow at each end. The two smaller projections at each end are believed to represent lotus flowers. The name solar bark comes from its shape, which resembles a boat that can travel on the water and in the sky. They were often brightly painted for rituals and ceremonies. The Khufu's solar bark was discovered with yellow paint all over it during an excavation in 1954. The Subterranean Chamber the first chamber, the subterranean chamber, is unique because it is not immediately accessible from any other pyramid part. The entrance to this chamber is found on the north face and was once sealed by a massive stone which has since been removed. It was most likely used for ceremonial purposes or to store ritualistic items. It has two short corridors leading from its main room with two alcoves on each side. There were paintings within these rooms, but they have long since disappeared. An exciting feature of this room is its shaft which rises at an angle toward the apex of the Great Pyramid. It's believed that Pharaoh Khufu would have placed his burial goods. The Secret Chamber Beneath Filled with Library Books According to a Harvard University archaeologist, there is a secret chamber beneath the ground filled with library books at the Giza Plateau. This chamber was created by an ancient Egyptian architect who wanted his work and wisdom to preserve for all eternity. We need to find out what kind of books are in the hidden library. We also need to find out how you can even access it today. There has been talk about bringing in lasers or sound waves, but something has yet to be found. The Queen's Chamber the Queen's Chamber is one of three chambers on the north side of the Great Pyramid. It was constructed with a corbelled roof and a niche for a false door. The Queen's Chamber also has something that separates it from other chambers in Egyptian tombs. The Queen's Room has two stone plugs weighing 70 tons each, blocking access to a large passageway. They were left undisturbed since workers placed them thousands of years ago. We believe there was originally an upper chamber in this level, but it collapsed before completion. Archaeologists have found blocks of limestone, granite, and alabaster up to two meters high near the top of the pyramid. Some people believe that these may be parts of a lost fourth chamber or higher levels, while others think they are unfinished stones from lower levels used by workers as stepping stones to reach the higher levels. The King's Chamber there are many mysteries surrounding these pyramids, one of which is what is inside the king's chamber. It's known that a shaft leads from this chamber to the outside world, but it remains a mystery as to what this chamber holds. Some theories state that there is a false door with no hieroglyphics, an empty room, or even the original form of Khufu's resting place before they moved his body to another location. One thing is for sure, we still need to crack the true secrets behind the Pyramid of Giza. The Grand Valley in one of the most famous pyramids, there is a long passage called the Grand Gallery. 
It is one of the longest and tallest galleries in any Egyptian pyramid. This gallery was a ceremonial pathway from the king's chamber to the outside world. It was built so the pharaohs could stand on the throne and on top of his pyramid look out into his land. This chamber at the end of the gallery has a narrow corridor that leads up steeply in a tight spiral staircase with seven foot high steps. It then opens again onto a large room where funerary texts were inscribed on the walls. Five niches once held statues of each god guarding an essential aspect of life, such as Isis protecting children. It is believed that these statues are now missing, and the pyramid area is not open to the public because it could damage them. The large tomb was just west of the Great Pyramid. It is just west of the Great Pyramid and is known as the Great Western Tomb. It appears to be a model for all other tombs in Egypt, including its entrance, chambers, shafts, and passages. The only significant difference between this tomb and those found in other parts of Egypt is that it doesn't have any inscriptions on the walls or ceilings. Many scholars believe there are three reasons why the builders didn't put any writing inside this tomb. They may have wanted to avoid distracting themselves from the awe-inspiring views of the pyramids and sphinx outside. It was not a royal burial chamber, so they did not need elaborate decorations. No excellent building material was available then, so they could not create long inscriptions inside. The Reliefs First, let's take a look at the reliefs. These images show us what life was like in ancient Egypt. They can give us information about jobs and what they did in their everyday lives. It's believed that some people were farmers or fishers, while others were builders or soldiers. The reliefs also tell us how Egyptians cared for their families and gods and made a living from trading goods with other countries. In this way, they helped spread Egyptian culture to the rest of the world. A Goblet of Glass in a Tunnel Under Giza Pyramids Egyptologists believe that a goblet made of blue glass found in a tunnel under the pyramids at Giza Plateau in Egypt proves there is an undiscovered burial chamber. The blue glass goblet was found in a small room that a stone door had sealed off. The location is near Pharaoh Khufu's and Cheops' Great Pyramid and Mortuary Complex. French archaeologist Nicholas Grimmel believes the goblet may have belonged to Queen Nefertiti, who died around 1330 BC. She may have passed it on as a gift to her daughter Meritian. He believes no one knows why they put it back. The Tomb of Hetaferes I Hetaferes was a daughter and a wife of Pharaoh Khufu, who reigned in about 2560 BC. When Hetaferes died, she was buried in a tomb on the Giza Plateau near her husband's pyramid. The discovery of this tomb is significant because it's one of the only three queen's tombs in Egypt. It also revealed fascinating information about funeral practices during that time. Archaeologists learned that relatives would use wet linen rags to clean the body before wrapping them in more cloth. They mummified form with strips of linen or wool. After they were wrapped, they were placed inside coffins of wood and cartonage, which had been covered with plaster. However, these materials do not preserve well in the Egyptian climate. Mysterious Void in the Great Pyramid what was initially thought to be a simple hole in the ground is, in fact, a shaft that leads down to a hidden room or a cave. The discovery compares with one of archaeology's most famous discoveries, Tutankhamun's tomb. In 1922, English archaeologist Howard Carter found a small door leading to a large chamber containing more than 2,000 artifacts. The Egyptian government confirmed that the void has been explored and it is not an open area. It has walls that could contain masonry blocks or another type of architectural element inside it. It added that while they did not know the void's purpose, they hoped it would paint us an even clearer picture of how ancient Egyptians built the pyramids. The Solar Boat Museum this museum, located next to the Great Pyramid of Khufu, is a great place to learn about ancient Egyptian boats called solar boats. Solar boats were used in funerary ceremonies and at times as royal barges. King Khufu's solar boat is considered one of the largest boats ever built. They made the boat discovered from the Pyramid of Khufu cedar wood from Lebanon, which is no longer found there. Scientists estimate that it would have taken around 100 years to build this boat. Its cedar planks are still preserved today. The most impressive find was a piece of papyrus with an inscription describing how King Khufu asked Imhotep, the architect, to make him something that would last forever. The scientists had hoped to find some written account or evidence inside the boat, but so far they haven't found anything. They believe that because these boats were buried close to pyramids, any written documents might have been destroyed by groundwater seeping into the tombs over time. The Red Pyramid 
The Red Pyramid, also known as the Great Pyramid or Khufu's Pyramid, was built by Pharaoh Khufu around 2560 BC. It is 137 meters high and 230 meters wide at its base, making it one of the most significant monuments in the world. Egyptologists believe it took 20 years to build this pyramid. They discovered a coffin when they excavated the site. They found a mummy inside, but it had disintegrated into a white powdery substance over time. Egyptians used a type of wax called Egyptian natron to dry out the body and preserve it from decay. Only gold leaves were left on his head, suggesting that he might have been wearing a golden mask or headdress before he died. There are numerous tunnels underneath the Great Pyramid which archaeologists still need to explore fully. Some say an underground city might be waiting for us just below ground level. The Bent Pyramid The Bent Pyramid was built by Pharaoh Sneferu around 2600 BC and is the first known pyramid to deviate from a proper vertical alignment. The pyramid has two entrances at its base, one facing north and one south. The Bent Pyramid's arched galleries are more closely aligned with ancient Egyptian sacred architecture principles than other pyramids. The original design called for five rows of casing stones at the top because it is part way up an incline. There are only three rows left. It also retains an open inner courtyard that held the king's tombs. The Bent Pyramid is a perfect example of how some pyramids were designed as multi-use structures. This form would have allowed people to live inside the pyramid when royalty lived elsewhere. It served as a grand entrance when it was time for them to return home. The Great Pyramid of Khufu The Great Pyramid of Khufu was about 480 feet tall when it was first built. It is believed to have contained as many as 2,300,000 blocks weighing from 2 to 30 tons each. The pyramid is made up of three sections, a base section with a height that is less than half its total height, a middle section with a height equal to its total height, an upper section with a height slightly more than half its total height. There are two entrances inside the pyramid, one on the north face at ground level and one high on the south face. In 1837, British archaeologist Howard Weiss found a passageway leading from this entrance on the north side down into the bedrock beneath the pyramid. The Mausoleum of Mausolus Built to honor Mausolus, Queen Armitesia's husband and king of Cairo, the mausoleum was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The structure is made from a marble-like stone called Gigantolith, quarried near Mount Petelicus outside Athens. Mausolus died before construction of his monument had finished. Per their wishes, he and his wife were buried within the unfinished building when they were completed it around 353 BC. It stood like a gleaming white sentinel overlooking ancient Halicarnassus with five outlying towers at its corners. It became one of the most admired buildings in antiquity because it combined elegance with strength. The Step Pyramid the Step Pyramid is a type of pyramid with six or fewer tiers. It is unique because it has a flat base which provides its name. The oldest one we know about was built by Dozier, who ruled from 2691 to 2625 BC during the Third Dynasty in Saqqara. His architect and head of construction were Imhotep, who would later be worshipped as an Egyptian god. Imhotep used adobe bricks instead of stone bricks for the inner parts of the pyramids. He made sure they were placed so tightly together that they formed joints. There are three large stones on top of each other at the top of the pyramid, with channels cut down their center. These are called corbeling, and their purpose is to support the capstone that covers them. In Dozier's case, this vast capstone weighed 14 tons. The Secret Tomb of the Unknown In 1922, British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered a tomb deep within the Valley of Kings. The tomb contained a single coffin and was built for an unknown soldier who would have been buried in 1324 BC. No one knows who was buried inside because we found no identifying features on any artifacts. The only thing known about this soldier is his rank and his honorable burial by Tutankhamun's successor, I or Haramabub. He is most likely served as a senior officer at the end of Tutankhamun's reign when they faced incursions from Assyria. His body may be among those found at Deir el Medina, which included soldiers and their families who had been brutally murdered after being accused of treasonous behavior against Pharaoh Akhenaten. The Pyramid of Menkawar The Pyramid of Menkawar, for example, holds one secret that is yet to be revealed. To this day, we don't know what it is. We know that it is not treasure or a curse because archaeologists have not found anything when exploring inside. It could be something like an inscription on the side of a wall or a small tunnel leading to another room, but we will never know until someone else comes along and discovers it. They believe that the enslaved people built them or their spirits. 
the Medinet Habu. Medinet Habu is a funerary temple built by Ramses III, who ruled from 1186 to 1155 BC. It lies near Luxor, and its most distinctive feature is its gateway, which consists of two colossal statues. One depicts Amenhotep III, reigned 1855 to 1808 BC, and the other depicts himself. The temple has 14 statues of Ramses II, who reigned from 1279 to 1213 BC, and his wife, Nefertari. One of these statues features Ramses II seated with his queen on an elevated throne. The statue includes hieroglyphics on the wall below it that tell about how he died early and did not have time to do everything he wanted to do for the country. There are also hieroglyphics depicting what the pharaohs believed their souls would do after death. They believed they would join gods in heaven or continue to rule on earth as a spirit called the Ka. Another secret hidden within the pyramid is stairs leading up the northern side of one of its walls. The Dashoa Pyramid in Egypt The Dashoa Pyramid is one of the three main pyramids at the Giza Plateau and was built by King Khufu. It has a base length of 215 meters, a base width of 230 meters, and is 146.5 meters high. Throughout history, many secrets have been hidden in pyramids worldwide. The Dashur Pyramid contains 16 secrets that need to be fully understood today. One mystery involves an ancient Egyptian document known as the Sacred Papyrus of Ani. These state that the souls of the gods, who were thought to inhabit the heavens, were entombed with mummies for their resurrection on earth. Another point is about Queen Hedefri's coffin, which has hieroglyphics inscribed on its side, showing what it would look like from the inside. The Pyramid of Amahanet III The Pyramid of Amahanet III is located in Dashur, just outside Cairo. The pyramid was built for King Amahanet III and was constructed during his twelfth year as king. The pyramid is believed to have been an attempt by the king to imitate his father's pyramidal tomb at Hawara. It had a length of 180 meters, 590 feet, and its base was 100 meters, 330 feet square. On its eastern side, it features six small subsidiary pyramids within the outer casing about 20 meters high. The Concentrate Electromagnetic Energy in the Internal Chambers one of the ancient secrets hidden in pyramids is that they use a process called concentration to concentrate electromagnetic energy. It's speculated that they did it by creating an antenna-like design with long corridors and then a room at the end. They would concentrate the energy by being trapped at the end and bouncing back and forth until it was released as light or heat. The Discovery of Gunung Padang in 1914, the island archipelago of Indonesia was a colony of the Dutch. On large farms, the European settlers cultivated sugarcane and tobacco. The whites rarely entered the jungle. There were exceptions, however, and one day, a Dutchman who was particularly interested in antiquities and the legends of the natives undertook an extended jungle tour. His goal was clear. He wanted to find the Lost Palace, which, according to legends, had been built by a mystical king. Deep in the jungle, the man came across a large hill with a structure that resembled steps. The man climbed up and found heavy, upright stone blocks scattered in all directions at the top of the mound. Nevertheless, it was quite obvious to this man that a man-made structure once stood on this spot. Immediately, the lucky finder wrote a note to his government. In it, the man, whose name unfortunately has not survived, asked for the financing of an expedition. That same year, a first report on the extraordinary find appeared in a Dutch Report on the Department of Antiquities. Although the expedition was planned, it never happened. Due to the unrest in the Indonesian colonies as well as the two world wars, the find fell into oblivion. In 1949, Indonesia became independent and the Dutch had to leave the country. It was not until 1979 that the site was rediscovered. About 30 kilometers from the city of Sinjur and 90 kilometers from the Indonesian capital of Jakarta, locals accidentally found the structure which was called Gunung Padang in their legends. The finders contacted the officials of the National Antiquities Authority and shortly after, the first surveying work was carried out on the mountain. The Incredible Structure of Gunung Padang In the years following the rediscovery of the site, Indonesian experts first found a large quantity of stone blocks. They too came to the conclusion that the stone caves, which were between 25 and 40 centimeters wide and about 1.5 meters high, were not located at this site by chance. 
The stones had clearly not been made by humans. However, they had apparently been brought to this exposed location intentionally and in large quantities and placed in specific arrangements. This initially suggested a primitive megalithic culture. The rock is andesite, a rock of volcanic origin. Under certain circumstances, andesite can dry out in such a way that strictly geometric or the typically elongated shape is formed. The stones came from a nearby volcano. However, the question arose as to who had hauled the blocks of stone weighing an average of 250 kilograms to this location and why. Some of the blocks even weighed more than 600 kilograms. Moving such stones required some kind of technology. Initially, archaeologists and historians dated the construction of Gunang Padang to the Bronze Age. Around 2500 to 1500 BC, a megalithic culture fit the scientific picture. But then everything turned out quite differently, and science still faces an almost unbelievable puzzle at Gunang Padang. The Findings of Danny Hillman, Natawi Dehaja a few years ago, the Gunang Padang site was once again scrutinized by a scientist. When geologist Danny Hillman Nadwajana saw the pictures of the site, he immediately noticed that the hill of Gunang Padang absolutely did not fit into the picture of the rest of the site. Danny Nadwajana intuitively saw at once what had remained hidden from all the other scientists until then. Gunang Padang was not just a collection of megaliths on a natural hill. The geologist immediately suspected that the entire mountain had been the construction of humans. New excavations revealed new layers of an actually massive structure under the top layer. Under the seemingly primitive arrangement of stone caves, elaborate constructions of rooms, corridors, and steps were revealed. Little by little, the structure could be reconstructed that just amazed the researchers. The uppermost layer of the mountain apparently consisted of five separate terraces or courtyards, each connected by an ascending stairway marked by pillars. In the form of a stepped pyramid, the terraces rose to a height of about 960 meters above sea level. Gunang Padang occupies a total area of about 900 square meters. But the discoveries of geologist Danny Nadawajana were far from over. The man had been surprised by the fact that the structure of the structure became finer in the interior and testified to an advanced building art. For him, it was clear that Gunang Padang could not have been a sacred site of a primitive megalithic culture. Danny Natawahaja's team undertook further excavations and core drilling. What the researchers found is still difficult for the scientific world to understand. The drilling has produced evidence that Gunang Padang is a multi-level structure that was built layer by layer in successive phases. The structures of the surface were built between 4700 and 2800 BC. A little further down, there are structures that date to around 9600 BC. And in the deepest layers, the Gunang Padang structure was built around 22,000 BC. Among geologists, historians, and archaeologists, these results triggered a heated discussion. The correctness of the results of the Indonesian researchers were doubted worldwide and Danny Natawaja was called incompetent or even a fraud. Natawaja publicly commented on the accusations and hostility several times. In doing so, he always stood by his findings. I do not dispute that the megaliths on the surface are less than 5,000 years old, but I suspect that they were brought here because Gunan Padang has always been recognized as a sacred place. The deepest layers of the structure are between 12,000 and more than 20,000 years old and are the most important. They have potentially revolutionized implications for our understanding of history and I think it's important that we explore them properly. Despite the voices of critics, the researchers did not stop there and the government continued to support Natawaja's work. In Jakarta, officials knew full well that it would be a huge sensation if it turned out that Indonesia had a historical structure far older than the Egyptian pyramids and possibly proof that an advanced civilization existed in Southeast Asia long before the known advanced civilizations of the West. The president personally championed the continuation of work on the Gunding Padang Pyramid. Incredible Finds in the Jungle Thanks to the new funds, the excavations could continue and what the researchers found really exceeded all expectations. 
In 7,000-year-old layers of the structure, the researchers found jewelry, pottery, weapons, and even coins. This means that these coins date back to around 5,000 BC. However, until now, history tells us that first coinage appeared in ancient times only around 600 BC. This means that Indonesian coins are more than 4,000 years older. But the incredible finds were by no means at an end. The deeper stone layers of the pyramid had been built with a cement mixture, which received clay, silica, and iron. The use of cement testifies to an extremely advanced culture, and apparently these people also knew 5,000 years before the beginning of the official Iron Age, melting techniques through which they could extract the metal. More Fantastic Finds Subsequently, some alternative researchers took up the pyramid and investigated various aspects, such as the orientation according to certain cardinal points, and the possible use of the pyramid as a sacred building. Legends circulated among the locals about this place, saying that it would bring healing and wisdom. Gnang Padang translates as the Enlightened Mountain. Since its discovery, people came to this place to enjoy the special power or to meditate on the pyramid. Using modern equipment, para-researchers found sound structures emanating from the pyramid on site, and these correspond exactly to the western scale, as well as sound harmonies, which in ancient times were called sacred sounds or frequencies of the stars by scholars such as Pythagoras. It seems truly incredible that people in Southeast Asia knew about and used these frequencies thousands of years before the ancient Greeks. The Legend of the Sunda King In Indonesia and the Philippines, there are numerous stories of a great flood that caused large parts of Asia to sink. Researchers found out that Indonesia, which today consists of countless scattered islands, still had a connection to the mainland 10,000 years ago. At that time, the sea level was still about 120 meters lower. The continent was considered the Kingdom of Sunda, and according to legends, the King of Sunda had Gunung Padang built as his palace. According to the legends, Gunung Padang sank in the floods. It could only have been that the rising sea level separated the islands of Sumatra and Java from the Kingdom of Sunda. At the time when the islands were formed, people did not see that Gunung Padang had survived. Only there was a sea between the people of Sunda and the island then. So Gudang Padang could truly be the oldest known structure on Earth at the moment and turn historiography upside down. At the moment, this even seems to be probable because in other places of this world, also new testimonies have appeared that human culture has already produced highly developed cultures before the last ice age. Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is a mound complex that closely resembles Gundang Padang. In 1995, the German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt saw, similar to the Indonesian Dini Natawajada, that the supposedly natural mountain was in fact a structure. During excavations under the comparatively young ancient settlement on the hill, archaeologists found many other structures dating from 9600 to 8200 BC. Among the most impressive finds are megaliths 5.5 meters high and weighing 15 tons, showing strange symbols and representations of animals such as lions, insects, and wild boars. These sites are 5,000 years older than Stonehenge, and once again we have to wonder how humans were capable of creating such stone blocks at that time. Perhaps further work at Gunan Padang, as well as other finds, will soon provide us with a conclusive answer. Pyramid 101 The pyramids of Giza are not the only pyramids in Egypt. In fact, the Egyptians are prolific pyramid builders with 118 pyramids found in the country. The Pyramid of Dozier is the oldest and was built in 2630 BC to house the tomb of Pharaoh Dozier, founder of the Third Dynasty. The pyramid was built by the Pharaoh's advisor Imhotep, and Dozier was so pleased that he made Imhotep a god. Apparently, mortal kings could create immortal gods in ancient Egypt. The unfinished Pyramid of Baca is another pyramid that has left us with more questions than answers. Situated in the Zawet el Arayan area, it was completed after the death of its owner, Baca, son of Dihefri. Only the shaft remains, and since 1964, entry to the site has been prohibited, so archaeologists cannot find answers to their burning questions. Other pyramids in Egypt include 
the Bent Pyramid of Snufru, the Pyramid of Jajafri, the Lahu Pyramid, the Pyramid of Unas, the Red Pyramid, the Pyramid of Nyasser, and many more. These pyramids are not as magnificent or famous as the Pyramids of Giza, but they give us insights into the life of the Old and Middle Kingdoms. They are testaments that the Egyptians did not always get it right, evidence that the Giza pyramids are a result of conscious strides in perfecting ancient engineering. Why were pyramids built? Ancient Egyptians saw death not as the end of life, but as an interruption. They believed when the king dies, his spirit, or Ka, journeys into the afterlife and had to be prepared for the journey. The pyramids were built to house not only the pharaoh's tomb, but also his treasures, which they believed would make his journey easier. The wealthiest pharaohs were buried with such enormous treasures that when their pyramids were opened thousands of years later, the looted treasure was beyond imagination. Mummification was a solemn ritual done to preserve the pharaoh's Ka. Ancient Egyptian religious belief was that the gods would allow a man to be reborn if he had a pure soul. Hence, they hoped he would return to life. Building pyramids was a massive endeavor, and the construction could last the entire lifetime of its owner. It was believed that the greater wealth a pharaoh had in his pyramid, the more splendid his sojourn into the afterlife would be. When the pharaoh died, he became Osiris the god of the underworld who sets the sun. His son, the new pharaoh, was revered as Horus, the god of the sky, who would raise the sun again. The ancient Egyptians believed it was this relationship that kept the world in balance. The Pyramids of Giza The Giza complex in Giza, Egypt, is the site of the Pyramids of Khufu, Khafre, and Menakauri. The pyramids were built during the Old Kingdom between 2600 and 2500 BC. The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world listed by Anapur of Sidon. It is the oldest wonder and the only surviving one. It was built by Faru Khufu and is the largest of the three pyramids. His descendants, Khafre and Menakur, built the smaller Pyramid of Khafre and the modest-sized Pyramid of Menakar, respectively. Stonework at its best we can assume that Khufu did not expect his pyramid to survive four millennia in the desert, but it was definitely built to last. The Great Pyramid is a marvel of stonemasonry. The structure is made entirely of huge blocks of stone set into place by workers. The outer casing and the interior walls are made of white limestone, while basalt and alabaster were used for the floor. Getting stones for the pyramid posed no problem, as Egypt has no shortage of them. Basalt was quarried from the Fayum Depression in the Western Desert, while alabaster was brought from east of the Nile in the city of Luxor. We know how they got the materials used in the building of the pyramids and why they bothered to build pyramids in the first place. But how was the pyramid built? How was the pyramid built? There are several theories on how the pyramid was built, but none satisfies all the questions that have baffled historians and scientists for centuries. The construction techniques used by ancient Egyptians have been a mystery puzzle and conflicting hypotheses have been proposed to solve it. All hypotheses agree that the stones used to build the pyramid were carved from quarries with chisels and carried to their current position. The technique used to move them, however, remains disputed. A Historian's Account the most plausible hypothesis has the advantage of also being historical. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote about the pyramid and in his account, the stones were moved using wooden logs as levers. According to Herodotus, the pyramid was originally built like stairs and the stones were moved up each stair using the levers. However, Herodotus also noted that the pyramid was built from top to bottom. Pulleys had not been invented when the Great Pyramid was built, and thus it has been suggested that ramps made of brick and earth were used to lift the stone blocks. The ramp would have been a massive structure because it had to increase its height as the pyramid rose. Using sleds and levers, the blocks were carried up the ramp and set in position with gypsum mortar. Opponents of this theory have argued that there should have been traces of the ramps since building the enormous pyramid would have required ramps similar in size. Another Greek historian, Diodorus Siculus suggested that the workmen that built the pyramid could have dismantled the ramps themselves. But such an endeavor would mean thousands of workers had to be employed by Pharaoh Khufu. Sophistication meets simplicity. The building of the pyramid was not as simple as building ramps and quarrying stones. It was hectic work, and the clever Egyptians thought of several ways to make their work lighter. 
In the tomb of 12th dynasty pharaoh Dehopotep, researchers discovered an illustration showing 172 men transporting a 60-ton alabaster block using a sled. It revealed that the sleds were wooden planks with upturned edges, a crude but ingenious idea. By wetting the sand, the sled was easier to drag along. In the search for a decisive theory that explains how the pyramid was built, there have been several models that attempt to get a better sense of how it had to be done. In 1996, the Obayashi Corporation, a Japanese construction company, tested a model to know if blocks weighing 2.5 tons could be dragged by 18 men over 18 meters within a minute. Their test proved that it was possible. In 2013, a papyrus was found that contained the writings of a pyramid official named Merer. The papyrus was found in Wadi al-Jarf by French archaeologist Pierre Tellet and his team. Merer's writings gave critical details on how the pyramid builders worked, revealing a sophistication that was not before credited to ancient Egyptians. A particularly striking piece of information was how they obtained copper and brought it to the pyramid. They used a 200-meter-long L-shaped jetty to protect cargo ships as they sailed to the Sinai Peninsula, where the copper mining took place. After the copper was mined, they would return to Wadi al Jaraf and put it to good use in constructing the Great Pyramid. In his book, Engineering the pyramids, Dr. Richard Parry hypothesizes that they may have also used a cradle-like machine that suspended the rocks and allowed them to be rolled by a few people. Mathematics Building an enormous structure like the pyramids of Giza required mathematics to avoid failure. The towering image of the pyramids in modern times is a testament to the brilliance of ancient Egyptian engineers. The right measurements were made and correct calculations were done, but using old-school methods that you would find overbearing today. The pyramid builders did not use rulers, but measured in cubits. A cubit was the equivalent to the length from the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. The width of a hand with the thumb on the side, a hand, was another unit of measurement. Using cubits, they laid out the building site as a grid, marked with holes 10 cubits apart. Without compasses, they built the sides of the pyramids to be parallel to the north, south, and east-west axes. They used stars instead, identifying north, the rising and setting stars, through the movement of stars. How many workers built the pyramid? While Diodorus believed 360,000 workers built the pyramids, Herodotus recorded 100,000 workers were employed, and building the pyramids took them 20 years. Even in modern times, the figures are still hotly debated. Herodotus's 100,000 workers claim was pretty much uncontested for centuries. The Egyptians were farmers who could have worked on the Great Pyramid of Giza in the months while the Nile was flooded, then returned to their farms when planting season arrived. However, evidence found in the late 20th century brought that number into question, and archaeologists suggested that a modest figure of 20,000 workers could build the pyramid. The workers had been highly organized. The tasks of quarrying stones from miles away, carrying them up ramps, and setting them in place with precision would have been impossible if the workers had worked haphazardly. In his 2003 book, Experiments in Egyptian Archaeology, Stoneworking Technology in Ancient Egypt, ancient technology expert Denis Stock calculated that 45 workers were needed to move a 35,900-pound block and 8 people to move a 6,060-pound block. Such teamwork would have needed both skilled management and a high degree of organization. Before we continue, please like the video and leave a comment. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel to keep getting more informative videos in your feed. Who built the pyramid? The Great Pyramid is a mystery in itself, and almost all related discussions are controversial. Just like scientists have debated how the pyramid was built, the question of who built it also has been contested. King Khufu had commissioned the grandiose project, but where did his workforce come from? Multiple theories have been put forward. Slaves from Herodotus' account, Baru Khufu was a tyrant who used 100,000 slaves to build his eventual resting place. In contrast, the contemporary investigation has shown that Egyptians revered the 4th dynasty king, and despite being wealthy, Khufu could neither employ 100,000 slave workers nor get such a mammoth figure to work at the same time. Hollywood, unsurprisingly, perpetuated the myth with movies like The Ten Commandments. In the 1956 epic, slaves are depicted as the builders of the Great Pyramid. Jews. 
Another common misconception is that the Jews built the pyramids. In 1977, former Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin visited the National Museum of Cairo and claimed the Jews were the builders of Egypt's national emblem. The myth took root and was given credence by misunderstandings of the Bible. The Jews were famously liberated from Egypt by Moses after suffering so much hardship at the hands of the Pharaoh. They were subjected to back-breaking labor by the Pharaoh, the Bible recounts, and it was wrongly interpreted to mean that they had been forced to build the pyramids. Also, in a historical sense, it was a far-fetched idea. In the words of Israeli archaeologist Amahi Marzer, no Jews built the pyramids because Jews didn't exist at the period when the pyramids were built. Aliens if it were neither slaves nor Jews, who built the pyramids? Some would reply with a straight face, aliens. Conspiracy theories have repeatedly given aliens the credit for building the pyramid. From hieroglyphics resembling modern technology to sheer disbelief that ropes and logs could be used to build such a magnificent relic, the reasons skeptics give abound. One classic example of evidence produced by believers of the alien theory is the light speed coincidence. Since the geographic coordinates for the Great Pyramid are 29.979-2458 degrees north, and the speed of light is also 299,792-458 meters per second, then the aliens had to be the builders of the pyramid. How much of a coincidence could it be, they argue, when humans could not calculate the speed of light until 1950? Hence, the mastermind behind the pyramid's stellar engineering has to be aliens who traveled back in time. Although the pseudo-archaeology view has been debunked by the scientific community, it is worth noting that with some influential people like Elon Musk also agree with the alien theory. With his influence, Musk has indirectly strengthened the theory in the public mind. Egyptians from hieroglyphics and other antiquities found in and around the pyramids, archaeologists have been able to determine that the Egyptians themselves built the pyramids. It is most likely that free Egyptians, not slaves, worked on the pyramids and received salaries in return. They were also fed by the pharaoh and were divided into primary and temporary groups. The primary workforce consisted of 4,000 workers who lived in a village near the pyramid. They worked at the quarry and did the heavy work of hauling stones and masonry. The temporary group was larger, consisting of 16,000 to 20,000 workers. They were in charge of building ramps, shaping tools, mortar making, delivering supplies, and other miscellaneous activities. Their camp was separate from those of the primary workers. The Nile heavily influenced the progress of the work. A small workforce worked all year long and was joined during the late summer and early autumn by the rest of the workers. During these seasons, the Nile flooded the fields, marking the end of the farming season so the Egyptians could leave their farms. Living Conditions between 1999 and 2002, findings by archaeologist Mark Lenner provided the world with more information about the less charted world of pyramid builders. His excavations revealed that the workers slept on barrack-style mud ramps. These barracks were in huge dormitories called galleries. Galleries could contain as many as 2,000 workers and had reserved areas for cooking and copper working. The Egyptians ate a lot of protein. A daily ration of 23 sheep and 21 goats was sent to them from farms, and fish was a favorite meal, readily available from the Nile. Being such good builders did not prevent the Egyptians from paying the cost of heavy labor. Bodies excavated from Giza revealed they suffered from arthritis, and the work hurt their lower vertebrae. 50 tons One major disturbing point that scared the scientists about the pyramids was that each block used to build each of the pyramids could weigh up to 20 tons. In our time, moving blocks like that would be astronomical both in cost and effort, and yet the ancient Egyptians moved more than a million such blocks. No matter how one looks at it, it's terrifying for such an ancient civilization to be able to do something that we only recently could do with our advanced technology. Survival 5,000 years ago, it would be agreed that there weren't any of our technologies. They can live without technology and science. We've already remarked on how astounding it is that these pyramids were constructed thousands of years ago, making it impossible to see their full scale. And we've also stated how the original buildings have endured the test of time, but it's not just some fading away. That these pyramids are still there now is ludicrous. Even though they are older than the other six wonders of the world, other pyramids around the world have not withstood the test of time and are frequently partially damaged. Of the seven wonders of the world, the Great Wild Goose Pyramid is the only structure that is still standing, perhaps insufficient to stand up to the Egyptian pyramids. The Great Pyramid of Giza 
Although they required a significant number of laborers, the ancient Egyptians were able to move these massive buildings through column holes, ramps, and staircases, and they weren't the only pyramids in the region. One of the most well-known buildings in his human history is the Great Pyramid of Giza, and only a select few other buildings, even the enormous ones constructed thousands of years after, can compare to its magnificence and splendor. Despite how impressive they may seem, there are many other pyramids in the area. In actuality, Sudan, which borders Egypt, was once the hub of the Nubian civilization and has strong ties to Egypt, is the nation with the most pyramids in the world, not even Egypt, which borders Sudan. Replicating this feat The fact that buildings the size of the Great Pyramid won't be constructed for thousands of years is one thing that genuinely doesn't baffle or fascinate scientists. Around 1380, nearly 3,000 years after the Great Pyramid of Ghazal, or Cove Pyramid, was constructed, the Tower of Lincoln Cathedral in England eventually surpassed this height. In terms of skyscrapers, it wasn't until the 20th century that we constructed one taller than Manhattan's Singer Building. Here are 10 things that scare experts about the Egyptian pyramids. Natural Air Conditioning The pyramid's interior temperature. In the modern era, air conditioning is a luxury that we all take for granted. But in ancient Egypt, there was no such luxury. The Great Pyramid of Giza's interior remains consistently about 20 degrees Celsius and never goes above that, which is fantastic considering that the desert temperatures can reach above 50 degrees Celsius, even though there isn't any electricity or equipment to cool the air. Ancient Egyptian engineers accomplished a remarkable achievement when they created a structure that could control its temperature. Aquifer System the fact that the Great Pyramid was constructed using aquifer limestone was another intriguing finding. Aquifer limestones function similarly to modern-day hydro dams. The Great Pyramid's enormous limestone aquifer bed has natural tunnels built into it, which means that when rain falls and water drains into it, the water runs both upwards and downwards, generating electricity and providing more evidence that the Great Pyramid's purpose wasn't for graves. This kind of thinking deserves a lot of credit because even Nikolai Tesla tried to harness this energy to provide free energy to the whole people. Granite Coffer Inside the pyramid is a granite safe or coffer. Science and history have taught us a lot about the Great Pyramids, but this is undoubtedly not one of them. Another Great Pyramid contains a granite coffin, which isn't a remarkable discovery given the size of the pyramid itself, but there's something very special about the granite safe. It's too big. Simply put, the granite cabinets are too large to fit in the space. It's within, and unless the room is constructed around it, accessing it without causing damage to the safe or entrance is impossible. Scientists look for solutions, yet they are never successful. The Last of the Wonders the oldest and only one still standing today among the seven wonders of the ancient world are the Pyramids of Giza, the Colossus of Rhodes, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and the Statue of Zeus at Olympia were a few of these wonders of the past. Ancient Workforce The Pyramids of Giza were constructed by a constant workforce of between 20,000 and 40,000 individuals, according to discoveries on Earth at the Giza Workers' Hamlet. This includes laborers, stonemasons, builders, engineers, and more. Most of them were residents who put forth a lot of effort to build the pyramid. According to Greek historian Herodotus, 100,000 slaves labored incessantly and were relieved every three months by a fresh gang, erected the Great Pyramid. But he is in error. King Khufu, the Egyptian pharaoh who oversaw the construction of the Great Pyramid during the Fourth Dynasty, did not have access to a sizable slave population, and even if he had, 100,000 people could not have worked on one pyramid at once. The notion was then eventually verified in 1888 when British archaeologists Flinders Petrie began his research into the Sunniswart II pyramid complex in the Middle Kingdom at Ilihun. Here, a nearby walled hamlet called Cahoon produced a comprehensive town plan with tiny rows of mud brick terrace dwellings that contained a plethora of papyri, pottery, utensils, clothing, and children's toys, all the byproducts of everyday life that are typically absent from Egyptian sites. Extraterrestrial Help some people think that there may have been alien assistance in the construction of the pyramids because they were constructed during a time when it was uncommon to construct structures of this size. They also think that the pyramids may serve as a base for future alien loans. Scientists would never rule out any possibilities, even one as unlikely as this. The stories behind these amazing structures may never be fully revealed. True North Alignment 
on the west side of the River Nile are the pyramids. According to some Egyptian mythology, here is where the sun sets, and it has a strong connection to the underworld. The ability to perfectly align structures to the true north was a skill developed by the ancient Egyptians, which helps to explain why the alignment of these enigmatic constructions is so precise. Within a tenth of a degree, the Great Pyramid of Giza is oriented to the true north. This ancient Egyptian brilliance is still beyond the comprehension of scientists. How the buildings came to be so perfectly aligned is one of the most perplexing questions. The 138.8 meter, 455 foot Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Great Pyramid of Khufu, has square sides that are often very straight and almost precisely aligned with the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. Archaeologist and architect Glenn Dash wrote in a 2017 article for the Journal of Ancient Egyptian Architecture, the builders of the colossal Pyramid of Khufu aligned the great structure to the cardinal points with an accuracy of greater than four minutes of arc, or one-fifteenth of one degree. In fact, the three greatest pyramids in Egypt, two at Giza and one at Darshur, are all remarkably aligned. Number of Pyramids you can choose to disagree, but before you do, you might want to travel to Sudan's Nubia. Given that Nubia was formerly a part of ancient Egypt, it is true that the Giza pyramids influenced the Nubian pyramids. They resemble the Egyptian pyramids, but they are considerably smaller. The majority of them served as burial tombs for ancient kings and queens and could only hold one person. In short, Egypt isn't even the country with the most pyramids. Path to the Afterlife the pyramids were constructed to spiritually accompany the dead pharaohs into the afterlife in addition to serving as burial tombs for pharaohs and their families. Ancient Egyptians were very devout and they thought the pyramids were secure entrances to the afterlife. The Egyptians had a multiplicity of gods and thought that the pharaohs became gods after they died. To defend the deceased monarchs against satanic assaults, they erected the Sphinx at the entrance to the pyramid. This highly prized edifice was built as a result of these ideas. Siemens Phenomenon the Anglo-German engineer, metallurgist, and inventor had encountered an odd energy phenomenon when an Arab guide informed Sir William Siemens that, when standing on the summit of the pyramid with his hands wide, he could hear a piercing ringing noise. Siemens felt a stinging sensation and raised his index finger. Later, while sipping wine from a bottle he had brought, he experienced a slight electric jolt. After realizing that more observations were required, Siemens wrapped the bottle in a moist piece of newspaper to create a Leyden jar. When he briefly held this made-up Leyden jar above his head, it got so electrically charged that sparks began to fly. The Ben Ben Model an old stone with a conical shape known as the Benben Stone was recovered in the temple at Heliopolis. In the time of the pyramids, the temple served as the main place of worship in ancient Egypt. The Benben Stone served as the inspiration for several pyramidal designs, including, most likely, the Egyptian pyramids. Since Atum was later linked to Ra, the sun god, many Egyptologists have asserted that the Benben Stone represented the sun. It is also thought to be related to the god of the afterlife. Super Mortar According to an old Arabic saying, man fears time, time fears the pyramids. The pyramids are among the oldest structures on the planet. The extremely sticky mortar that was used to keep the blocks in place could be to blame for this incredibly lengthy lifespan. Four and a half centuries are involved. Scientists have examined the mortar used repeatedly, but they have never been able to identify its ingredients. These elephant-heavy bricks were joined together using almost five million tons of this mortar. Lopsided Pyramids the Ancient Egypt Research Association and the Glenn Dash Foundation for Archaeological Research worked together in 2015 to find that the west side of the pyramid is 0.6 to 14.1 centimeters longer than its easternmost counterpart. In the worst case situation, this means that one side of the pyramid may be up to 14.1 centimeters longer than the other. This contradiction, however, simply serves to confirm that the pyramids are a wonder of the ancient world. The Giza pyramids were constructed before calculators and computers were commonplace. It's a remarkable achievement to build such a huge structure with only a little irregularity and over 100,000 workers. Geometric Design A right-angled triangle with the vertical from the apex, a half base, and the slant side results from the cutting of the Great Pyramid in half. Then, if we use the dimensions of the Great Pyramid, we may determine if the angles of this triangle follow the golden ratio. Knowing the precise dimensions of the Great Pyramid is essential to understanding theories regarding its proportions. This is the reason why there have been so many trips throughout the ages, dating all the way back to John Greaves in 1638 and Napoleon in 1798, both of whom were looking for the correct measure.
measures. The absence of the upper curses and casing stones means that there are still no unquestionably accurate measurements of the Great Pyramid today. 20 years to build a pyramid. How long do you think it would have taken to build these extremely complex structures? These are intricate works of art, both in terms of accuracy and design. The construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza is thought to have taken more than 20 years. Some of the pyramids were constructed at the same time and took almost the same amount of time. These constructions are still being built according to the study. They are excellent examples of historic engineering and famous buildings. Even renowned academics are unable to explain this degree of engineering excellence. The Sphinx the Sphinx, which was initially constructed along with the Pyramid of Khafre, is the earliest royal statue in Egypt. The majority of Egyptologists who have written about the Sphinx contend that the statue was constructed from a limestone outcrop that was left over after enough limestone was mined for the pyramid. One of the oldest and most recognizable statues in the world was created as a result. The picture combines a lion, a powerful animal, and the body with a person on the head. The Egyptian pyramids have terrified scientists since they started studying them because if they are right, it means we aren't the most technologically advanced as we think. And if there was such an advanced civilization, how come they couldn't preserve themselves and succumbed to elimination? All of these facts point to our lack of knowledge about human predecessors and the access they had to resources that seem to outclass the current times. Click the subscribe button and follow us as we uncover more mysteries that would blow your mind and bend your reality.